Okay, so this video is, you can, you can think of it like a part two to my uh, Vesper theory and electron pair geometry video. If you haven't seen that, uh, I recommend watching that one probably before you watch this one because I'm probably going to reference it quite a bit. So in this video, I'm going to talk about molecular geometry and how it sometimes differs from electron pair geometry. And, and it differs from electron pair geometry in that molecular geometry excludes the lone pairs. Now, when I say that it excludes the lone pairs, the lone pairs still influence the geometry of the molecule. It's just that, you know, when it's all said and done, the lone pairs are sort of left out as if they weren't there. And uh, rather than show you one of those big tables or, you know, bore you to death with notation, I think I'm just going to sort of show you the theory behind it. And then hopefully that will do better than any table ever could. So that's my goal. All right. So <clears throat> consider a central atom A with three electron pairs. Now these electron pairs could be used for bonding, they could be used as lone pairs, regardless, three electron pairs. Now we know, at least especially if you watched my last video, you know that the electron pair geometry around the central atom is trigonal planar. But sometimes the molecular geometry could be different from trigonal planar. It, it depends on the presence or absence of lone pairs. Now, if there are no lone pairs, in other words, if every one of these pairs of electrons is used for bonding and not a lone pair, the, atom, the central atom doesn't have a, have a pair of electrons all to itself, then the molecular geometry is uh, still going to be trigonal planar. So zero lone pairs, trigonal planar, same thing as the electron pair geometry. With no lone pairs, the electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry will be the same. Now, consider this. Let's say instead of three bonding pairs, we have two bonding pairs and one lone pair. Now the lone pair is still going to influence this geometry. In other words, the electron pair geometry is still going to be trigonal planar. However, because of this lone pair, the molecular geometry has now changed. And with one lone pair, we call this electron pair, uh, this molecular geometry bent. We say that this has bent geometry. It's not trigonal planar anymore because of this lone pair. We exclude it as if it weren't there. Okay, now let's go on to another scenario. Get my central atom here. Oh, where did it go? Here it is. Okay, now consider a central atom A with four electron pairs, four valence electron pairs. Now, we know that the electron pair geometry is always going to be the same when it has four electron pairs, and that's going to be tetrahedral. This is shown in my last video. What about the molecular geometry, though? Well, if there are no lone pairs, then it'll be the same, right? Tetrahedral. Rather than writing it, I'm just going to point that arrow there. But, okay, now let's consider what happens when we have either one lone pair or two lone pairs. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. One lone pair and then two lone pairs. Okay, well imagine instead of four bonding pairs we have three bonding pairs and one lone pair. That's going to result in this shape here. And what this is called, I'll write it down, this is called trigonal pyramidal. We say that this has trigonal pyramidal geometry. That's when you have one lone pair and three bonding pairs. Okay, what if we had a second lone pair? In other words, what if we took two of these bonds and changed them into lone pairs? Let's see if I can get that right. Okay. 
what results is another bent configuration. We say that this has bent geometry. A prime example is water. The central atom oxygen has two lone pairs and two bonding pairs, making its geometry the bond angle, or excuse me, the geometry bent. So this bond angle between these two, even with two lone pairs, is still approximately the tetrahedral value of 109 degrees. It's actually a little less than that because these lone pairs have, have a tendency to push back on the bond, so it actually lessens the bond angle a little bit. But you know, beyond the scope of what I'm talking, that's a little beyond the scope of what I'm talking about, but essentially it's a 109 degree bond angle. So those are some of the different uh, geometries that you have. Um, you know, once you introduce lone pairs, it gets a little more complicated. And like I said, the electron pair geometry starts to differ a little bit from the molecular geometry. But um, I think most professors, just a tip, I think most professors, you know, on, on tests and things like that, teachers, most of them ask for this. They ask for the molecular geometry. I think that tells a little bit more than the electron pair geometry. It's a little more, um, a little more specific, so I think that's what they go for. Um, both are correct in their own right, but they do have their differences from time to time. All right, good luck.